This video will take a detailed look on how to wire APhone's GT multi-tenant system. Here is a wiring diagram of the GT expanded system. The expanded system is any system over 48 apartments and it can be expanded to up to 500. This particular diagram concentrates on the back end equipment. The apartment station wiring will be looked at later on in this video. Here's a list of parts needed for the back end equipment of the GT system. On the left hand side, you have the GT DMBN entrance panel. Then you have a PS2420UL power supply to power the system, followed by the GT VBX, which is used for the expanded system. Any system more than 48 apartments needs this unit for video expansion. Above that, you have the GT BCXBN, which again is the expanded module for the audio system. In the lower right hand corner, you have the GTW DP, which is a distribution point and it can be used in lieu of a wire nut. Above that, you have the GT BC, which is the audio bus controller. And on the top, you have the GT VBC, which is the video bus controller. Keep in mind, the expanded system is for systems over 48 apartments, and it can handle 500 apartment stations, 4 guard stations, and 16 entry panels. The main difference between a standard system and an expanded system is the expanded units themselves. It is important that you know what they are and how they operate. The first unit we have here is the GT BCX BN audio expander unit used for the audio circuit. The left-hand side of this module is used to terminate the audio entrance portion of the system. The right-hand side of it is used to terminate the apartment side of the audio system. For the video, we need a GT VBX video expander. The bottom portion of this unit is used to terminate the entrance panel side of the circuit. The top portion is used to terminate the apartment side of the unit. When using the GTVBC and GTBC, they work into pairs. The BC is for the audio and the VBC is for the video. Here's a sample trunk line in loop format. You cannot have more than 25 units on a particular trunk line. All right, let's take a look at the entrance panel. On the right hand side, you'll see an actual schematic of all the connectors on the back of the unit. We'll go over the most common used and see how we wire the system. If you're using more than one entrance panel, in preparation for the install, you must give each entry panel a unique ID. And this is done by changing the dip switches on the back of the entrance panel. Once you have your dip switches set properly, let's take a look at how you wire it. We're gonna look at the main connectors on the back of the unit. The main connectors we're gonna use for this installation is A1 and A2. This is where your video bus gets connected. Then you have ELM, ELC, and ELB. This is used for your lock connector. Then you have R1 and R2. That's used for your audio trunk line connection. And on the bottom, you have DC plus and minus for your power supply. Okay, let's start building our back-end equipment. The first module we're going to add is the GTBC bus controller. This bus controller is going to be used for the entrance panel side of the circuit. Then we're going to drop in a GTDP distribution point, followed by the GTBCXBN. The GTBSBN is an expanded module. With this unit, the next GTBC that we add will be used for the amplification of the apartment side of the circuit. And we'll add another GTWDP for the distribution of the apartment station trunk lines. Okay, now let's power the system up. We'll take a PS2420 and energize the entrance panel. Now we'll take the same power supply and share it with our first GTBC that is going to take care of the entrance side of the circuit. We'll add another power supply and we'll power up our GTBC which is going to operate and energize our apartment side of the circuit. Last but not least, another power supply to power up the expanded module. 
Now let's start our audio trunk. We're going to take R1, R2 from the entrance panel and run it to the GTWDP. From there, we're going to run the GTWDP to the GTBC. We recommend this wire is 10 feet or less away from the GTWDP. Now we're going to run a wire from the GTWDP down to the entrance side of the GTBCXBN. Now we run a wire from the apartment side of the GTBCXBN from sub 1A to a distribution point. Then from the distribution point to R1 and R2 on the GTBC. Now we'll start building the video trunk line. First we'll add a GTBCX followed by a GTVBC. We're going to run a jumper from the GTBC to the GTVBC to add power. It's recommended that these two share a power supply when they're running in pairs. We'll start wiring our video trunk by adding a wire from A1 and A2 from the entrance panel over to common one A1, A2 on the GTVBX. Then from the GTVBX, B1 and B2 from sub 1, over to the GTVBC A1 and A2 on the input side of the GTVBC. Now use the ribbon cable enclosed in the box to power up the GTVBX. The back end of your system is complete. Most integrators will mount this onto a board or put it into a lockable cabinet. When you're installing the apartment stations, there are two ways to do this. One is called the handshake method, where you need two technicians, one at the entry panel and one in the individual apartment. The next method is the dip switch method, where each individual apartment station gets its own dip switch setting associated with a software ID. The nice thing about this method is it can be performed by one technician on the workbench before the installation begins. Once you set the dip switches on the apartment stations, you simply have to go into our software tool and identify with the unit link ID which apartment has what physical unit. You might want to pause the video and read the example so you get a better grasp of how the concept works. On the right hand side, you'll see a schematic of the indoor station with all of its connectors. Okay, now let's focus on the important ones. The video connector is B1 and B2, and the audio connectors are R1 and R2. Now you need to make a decision on how you're going to wire it. There are two ways to wire it. The loop wiring method on the right hand side and the home run method on the left hand side. We will go over both in this video. Right now we will attack the loop wiring. Okay, let's add our first apartment station. As you can see here, we have R1 and R2, which is our audio trunk line, and B1 and B2, which is our video trunk line. So let's add our audio trunk line to this system. So we'll place a wire from the GTWDP to the R1, R2 on the tenant station. And now we'll place our video trunk line between the GTVBC, B1 and B2, and the B1, B2 on the tenant station. Now we can start creating our trunk line. With each tenant station added, your trunk line grows, connecting B1 and B2 and R1 and R2 in and out on the tenant stations. One particular trunk line cannot have more than 25 apartments. When the last station has been added to your trunk line, you need to terminate the video. On the back of the tenant station, you'll find a switch A and B. Please flick that switch to the A position. Now you can utilize the remaining five outputs on the GTVBC. The important thing to remember is you can't have more than 125 apartment stations on a pair of GTBC and GTVBCs. Here is what a fully populated GTBC and VBC would look like, with all six outputs being utilized. We have just completed our first installation of 125 indoor stations. 
utilizing one set of GTBC and VBCs. Now you can use the remaining three sets to grow your system depending on the size. Now let's take a look at the home run wiring method. When using the home run wiring method, we need to add a new product called the GT4Z. The GT4Z supports four tenant stations. It is critical that you realize that the GT4Z is designed to support four apartments. You cannot take a loop trunk line that you've created and put it to the output of a GT4Z. It simply will not work. When you're designing your system, you have to decide whether you're using a trunk line that's a home run or a loop. You cannot combine on one trunk line both methods. Okay, so let's add our audio trunk line from our GTWDP to our GTBC. And now we'll add our video trunk line from our GTVBC to our GT. Z. Let's start adding our apartment stations. So we'll add four apartments, and the first thing we want to do is add our audio, R1 and R2, and then we're going to add our video, a B1 and B2, and now we can just continue adding GT4Zs, and you can have up to six GT4Zs on an individual trunk line. Again, when you're done adding your final GT4Z, you need to terminate the video by switching your AB switch to the position A. Now we're going to look into how to we'll wire our lock. We're going to take a look at the ELM, ELC, and ELB terminals on the back of the entry panel. A phone can support triggering both an electronic strike and a mag lock. Let's go over the process of installing an electronic strike. Simply take the ELM wire and go from the back of the door station to your electronic strike. And then from the electronic strike the other side, you go to your power supply. It's highly recommended that you use a separate power supply. Do not share power supplies with the iPhone product. And then wire that back to ELC. The circuit you just created is normally opened. So at rest, there's no power running through your electric strike. When your customer presses the key button on their tenant station, it closes the circuit, allowing power to flow, and opens the door. Now we'll show the wiring for a mag lock. For a mag lock, we want to create a closed circuit, where electric is always running through the circuit, energizing the mag lock. To do this, we want to take the ELC connect it to one side of our mag lock. The other side of our mag lock goes to a third-party power supply. Again, do not share with an iPhone power supply. And the other side of the power supply goes to ELB. So now, when your tenant presses the button on the tenant station, the key button, it will unlock the door by breaking the circuit. The GT system can accommodate up to 500 apartments. The one thing you should do when designing your system is make sure you fall within a phone's wiring distance parameters. Here's a chart that shows you how far you can go from each individual component of the system. And please keep in mind, if you use a phone's wire, you get an extra one-year warranty on your product line. If you need further assistance, please take a look at the a phone website for more resources.